Our gospel reading from Luke today contains a couple of very familiar things. First of all, the greatest law, you should love the Lord your God, and also the story of the Good Samaritan. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said to him, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Here is our reading. Would you like to help 
the Good Samaritan. Well, who can say no to that? It was only later on that the people of that city discovered that there was no Good Samaritan charity, but the woman herself was the Good Samaritan and pocketing the money for herself. Sometimes think that if we try to be neighborly, if we try to be a good Samaritan, that you know we might just be taken advantage of. And so, as we come to the text today, I'm guessing that some of you at least are already a little skeptical. Even though this is one of Jesus' best known stories, there's a built in resistance to its lesson. So here's the story again in a nutshell. A man was traveling between Jericho and Jerusalem, attacked by robbers, left for dead, ignored by all sorts of people, at least a couple of people, who you would have expected to stop and help, and then helped by someone who you would not have expected to stop to help. And then the singer, Jesus says to the lawyer in the text, but to us by extension, go and do likewise. Be like that man. Be like that good Samaritan who helped a total stranger, even though he wasn't sure if the man deserved it, even though he wasn't sure if the situation would be risky or not. I think that's a powerful text and a disturbing text. Because I doubt there's anyone here this morning who doesn't hear that with at least a tinge of guilt. Because we know there have been times, countless times probably, when we could have or should have or might have helped someone, but for a whole variety of reasons we chose not to. I don't have the time. Might be dangerous. I don't want to give my money away. I've got errands to run. I've got a sermon to write. Yeah, we have our excuses, right? But deep down inside, we know these words, these words of Jesus and this parable of the Good Samaritan and Jesus' command, go and do likewise. This is a disturbing text because it's a clear message. So it should be easy to obey, right? But here's my confession. I'm a lot more like that priest than that Levi, not only by occupation, but by my actions, <clears throat> than I am like that good Samaritan. So I, too, have these feelings of guilt. I, too, am disturbed by the command to go and do likewise. And it, yet it is clear, is it not, that one lesson, perhaps the lesson that we hear at least, that we're to get from this is to go and do likewise. Be more compassionate, show more mercy, be more helpful. It was Jesus' answer to the question, who's my neighbor? And of course, Jesus redefined that question to be, what does it mean to act like a neighbor? But if that's all that we hear, I think we're missing something important. Because please remember, there were two questions that that lawyer asked. First, he, or second, he asked, who's my neighbor? That's the second question. But the first question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I think this story of the Good Samaritan, Samaritan answers the first question first, and then goes on to answer the second lesson, or the second question. I think it only makes sense to take them in order. In asking the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The man was looking, maybe longing for the good, meaningful, purposeful, fulfilling life. He wanted a fruitful and satisfying life with God. He wanted life with God. He wanted to know how he could get up and out of the ditches of brokenness, separation. He wanted to know how he could pull himself up from the brokenness of the world and the brokenness of life. Oh, questions this week we're asking. And the answer came in this story. And 
to understand it, we need to know that we are the ones who are in the ditch. We are the ones who are bruised and bleeding and dying. We are down and out. And we cannot get out of that ditch. We cannot save ourselves. We must wait for that good Samaritan. We must wait for the Messiah. We must wait for Jesus. Now, what can I do? What has Jesus done? What can Jesus do? And the good news for you and me and our nation and our world today is that though we are the wounded and in the ditch of sin, though we are broken by the pain of life, while we are disturbed and hurting and confused by the news that we see, and read. Jesus comes to us. Jesus comes to carry us out of our ditch. He'll take us upon his back, the same back that shouldered the cross. He'll carry us to the light, to brightness, to the glory of living with him forever, Jesus has come. Because we cannot pull ourselves up out of the brokenness and the bondage of sin which engulfs us. We didn't use this confession today, but the other confession, the prayer confession, says we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. But Jesus can. But Jesus can. Maybe you're feeling down in the ditch right now. Maybe you are hurting or bruised or bleeding. Maybe you feel like you just can't make it anymore. Open your eyes and behold Jesus, the good Samaritan who comes to live with you and heal you and restore you to wholeness. When we've been lifted and cared for and saved by Jesus, you know what happens? Jesus points out all the others living in their ditches. All the people of the world we encounter who are our neighbors. Answer the second question. And Jesus commands us to go and do likewise. He instructs us in the words of our reading from Colossians, which came and read so well. Those of us who have been rescued and who understand the truth about God's great kindness. He instructs us that living life, a fulfilling, meaningful, purposeful life, is lived in service to others, living in their ditches. You see, after Jesus has rescued us, after we've experienced that rescue from our ditches by Jesus, something happens. Jesus invades our life. Then he uses our hands and our material and financial resources and our valuable time to reach out to our neighbors. Scripture says, it is no longer I, but it is Christ who dwells in me. We are the body of Christ active today. Let's do it.
do that today.